What's up you guys? It's your girl Taylor. Um, and I know when I was a junior, uh, my heart was set on Stanford. That was the only school I could possibly go to. Um, so I know I was constantly looking at like YouTube videos for like tips and tricks because I wanted every trick in the book on how I was going to get into Stanford. I needed to get into Stanford. I looked at how other people got in and you know when they shared their test scores and they told me they had 35 ACTs and got 5 on all of their AP tests, I started to panic because I don't have those scores. Um, so I'm kind of weary of telling you like my test scores and just what's in my application um, just because I know obviously not a lot of people are going to be exactly who I am. Um, and that might cause a lot of people to panic, um, but I am going to include my information as well as a lot of just generic tips to help you hopefully better um, your college application. So if you're a junior and you're watching this, hi, um, it's okay, it will really be okay. It's going to be so stressful this whole year, your whole senior year is going to be nothing but stress, can confirm, but it'll come to an end, you will graduate. You'll find a college, whether it's your dream college or not, it's okay because you'll go on and life will be great and you'll get degrees and you'll have a great life. So I promise it's okay. Just remember to breathe and remember to pace yourself and just manage yourself because really it's okay. Eat, sleep, take care of yourself. So these are my tips and tricks for all of you on how I got into some schools. So um, quick recap. Um, basically, I got into Cornell, which is where I am going this fall, um, Dartmouth, Duke, Rice, Vanderbilt, and UCLA. First things first, um, you've got all your background information, where you live, who you are, all that generic stuff that you can't help, so it is what it is. Before I dive in, I do want to say this is so important, I cannot stress this enough. Colleges, college test scores are on a scale. They're on a range, not a scale, they're on a range. Um, and you can find the college range of like ACT and SAT scores for pretty much any college online if you just Google it. Um, but if you don't fall in the range, it's okay. I promise it's okay. Because no magic number is gonna guarantee a rejection or an acceptance. It's not how that works. Um, every college admissions officer will tell you this, they view applications holistically and you have to be a well-rounded student in order to have a solid application. Testing. First things first, I'm going to tell you basically my course load in high school. Um, I'm also going to insert a picture of my transcript so you can see like exactly what classes I took in case you want to. I don't know if that's going to be helpful or not, but we'll throw it out there just in case. Freshman and sophomore year, I think I took one AP class both years. Um, junior year, I took two. And then senior year, I took five, um, and every other class I took was an honors class if it was like offered. Um, I got all A's throughout high school, um, so that was fun. Um, my GPA, unweighted, is a 4.448, and I think the highest you can get at my school is a 4.5, not sure. That being said, my class rank is 23 out of 235, uh, which puts me right at the 10% mark um, if I was like one um, like person lower, I'd be like out of that top 10%. AP testing sucked. I cannot test well. I, my AP psych test, I got a two, which is what, actually what I want to major in, so that kind of sucked. Um, every other AP test I've taken, I got a three. This year's probably no different. We'll see in July. Um, so AP tests suck, but I left them off of my application because they're optional. And I knew that if an admissions counselor said like, hey, this girl wants to major in psychology, she got a two on her AP psych test. I figured that would like give some red flags and be like, yikes. Um, so I didn't include it because I wanted to give myself my best chance and that's how I thought I would. Okay, so that's what I look like inside the classroom. Um, I only took the ACT, I did not take the SAT. Um, I got a 32 on the ACT. Um, I took two subject tests because they were like required for some school. Um, for math two, I got a 700. And for chemistry, I got like a 560, which really sucked. I gave that to Cornell and Cornell accepted me. People below the range, get in. People at the very top of the range, don't get in. It's a circle of life. I know someone, Vanderbilt's average is like a 32. And I know someone who had a 27 ACT score and got into Vanderbilt. Also know plenty of people who have 35s and 36s and got rejected from Ivy Leagues. So, honestly, if you have a school that your heart is set on, as much as mine was set on Stanford, 
and it's like a super reach school, go for it. Apply. There is absolutely no harm in submitting an application. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to lose a little bit of money. That's okay. And you're going to get, you might get rejected, which is a-okay. Trust me, I cried over Stanford for days, but now I think Cornell is honestly my best shot. And I really don't think, looking back, that I would belong at Stanford. Admissions counselors know their school and they're, they're and they know if you're going to be a good fit for that school. And they're going to make the best decision for their campus. Um, and that's kind of the best decision for you too, because you don't want to go to a school that you're not going to fit in at, right? There is no harm. That money that you're some, that 80 bucks that it takes to submit that Stanford application, it's not a waste. Trust me, it is in no way a waste. Um, just because you honestly don't know. You have no idea what's going through the mind of an admissions counselor. There is no way to tell. Second part is um, all of your letters of rec. So you have most colleges take two from teachers and then your school counselor sends one. Um, really, you can't control this. Um, you can't control your counselor at all. They are who they are. There's no getting out of it. And they have to write like hundreds of these every year for every student. Um, so you can't bank on that one being all that great or anything. But these two teachers, you have control over. So don't necessarily pick the teacher that you have the best grade in their class. You want a teacher who can write for you both in and outside the classroom. So say if you have like a teacher who's also the coach of a sport that you're on, um, that'd be great, or like a club that you're in or something like that. Um, I got mine from my chemistry teacher because I was literally in her room every single day for hours after school for tutoring just because I could not comprehend chemistry to save my life. Um, and my English teacher, she was like the host of our Gay Straight Alliance for like a couple months. Um, I had her for, I had both these teachers for two years, so they knew me pretty well. Um, and she was also um, the like leader of uh, my scholars program, which I'll get into more when we get to like extracurriculars. Um, so two teachers that knew me really well um, were able to write like solid letters for me. Also, ask your teacher early. For the love of God, ask your teacher early because you know you've got to hit submit if you're applying early decision that submit button is in november so i literally asked my teachers um, before i got out for summer like i asked them may of my junior year and i was like hey because i figured they could write it over the summer and knock it out and i knew that they were going to get pounded with hundreds of students they're like you know so many students asking them for letters so i was like hey do you want to like write me a letter like that way you can work on it over the summer and you have ample time because I know um, like my English teacher she got asked probably by 30 people and then everyone who asked her after that she was like nope I can't do it I have too many um, and then you just lost especially if that was one of like your best teachers you just lost them because you waited and you want them you want to give them time to write the best letter that they can you don't want them to rush that so ask them early also send them thank yous because that takes a lot of time so send them thank yous okay okay next part is the activities and like extracurricular stuff really this isn't something that you can help but mainly you want an activity that you've been in for a long time that shows you're super passionate about it um and also if you can get some like leadership and citizenship stuff in there that's a plus um so basically some activities are going to be super common and some activities are going to be super rare um, and you want anything that you can get to set yourself apart because those Everyone who's applying to those higher ranked institutions are gonna have the same test scores. You're all smart, we know that. Everyone, you know, background stuff, that's like pretty standard, um, like testing. All of that stuff is stuff you can't control. Your extracurriculars and your essay, you have full control over and you can show exactly who you are in those places. So um, basically, for my activities, like the common ones that I did were um, National Honor Society, which you know you have 20 seniors from one high school in National Honor Society. Multiply that by the eight high schools in my county and by the hundreds of high schools in my state and by the thousands of high schools in my country, you're not that special. That was like the really common one that I did. Oh, I'm also in 4-H, which I actually think is pretty common, even if you have like no idea what that is. Then the rare activities that I did, um, I'm in my high school scholars program, which I talked about earlier. 
Um, basically, that is an extracurricular like club. Um, you have to have like a certain GPA and get in via um, an application and an interview process. Um, but basically, that kind of um, guides students through um, the like researching and essay writing process that they'll experience in college because most high school essays are like two pages and you know that's not going to happen in college. Um, so for that I had to complete a 15 page research paper and then uh, present that in front of a committee um, basically of a topic of my choice. Um, so I had a mentor who kind of like took me through that. Um, so I had a mentor who took me through that. Um, so that was great. That was a very academically stimulating experience that also showed that I am prepared for these higher level institutions and I'm ready to take on that academic rigor. And then the other kind of rare thing I did is that I'm in ROTC through my high school, which is super common, um, but we have an air rifle team um, that I've been in for the past four years. Also, I've been a 4 h for nine years. Forgot to mention that. So that obviously shows that I can stick with something and I'm super passionate about it. Um, so I've been on air rifle for four years um, and then this past year I served as commander. So obviously I'm the only commander in my school. Uh, multiply that by like the six high schools in my district that have air rifle teams and assuming that they have senior captains, that's six people in my like county that are air rifle captains. There's only six of us. And most high schools actually don't have air rifle teams. Um, so that was definitely something that put me apart and kind of that was something that was like interesting about me like hey i shoot air rifles and i compete with them and i'm actually pretty good so now we get to the essay part which is probably the most stressful part because you're going to be with that process of your application for months and months and months god i cannot tell you how many times i wrote this essay first of all first part of the essay you want to talk about something that you haven't shown in your application some part of you that you were not able to show through your grades and through those extracurriculars. You're gonna rewrite this essay a hundred times and that's okay. Your first draft is probably not gonna be the draft that you submit. You want so many people to look at this essay. I had two English teachers look at this essay. Um, this essay was actually like one of the first like papers we wrote for my senior English class. Um, so we were like revising it in class and my teacher made like so many comments and like we did peer reviews and all that fun stuff. Um, my best friend read it, my parents read it, I read it at various times of the day because at 2am I'm a very different person than I am in like mid-afternoon. So um, you're going to be with this thing for a long time so you, you want this to reflect you because this is where you're going to shine and this is where you're going to set yourself apart. So basically you have the essay for the common app which is just like one essay that's roughly like 600 words um there are word limits so you'll learn how to crunch a sentence into a word very fast okay um but basically it offers like five prompts they don't care what prompt you do one prompt you can basically talk about anything in i think the most important thing is to choose a prompt choose the prompt question that goes with what you're talking about because for my I wrote this essay and then it applied to three different prompt questions and I was like okay which one does it accurately answer and I picked one originally and I sent that one in early decision and then I went back and read this again before I submitted like my like regular decisions and realized that it actually answered a different question a lot better than it answered the one I chose so I changed the question that it answered um, basically what my English teacher told me for this essay, like the number one thing, is that you want to show and not tell. Um, for a very, very basic example of this, um, like for example, I said that I was nervous. You'll figure out why because I'll tell you what I wrote about. But I said I was nervous um, and that was obviously telling how I felt. Um, but instead of, I could show it by saying like my hands were sweating and I was shaking and I was crying and all that stuff. That shows you that I'm nervous without telling you that I'm nervous. So you want to show and not tell. What I wrote about is when I got my septum pierced because I am the only person in my high school that has their septum pierced. So I thought, hey, that was new unique. Um, for me, this was an incredibly important moment because it kind of was the moment where I um, kind of declared my independence as a person. Um, I'm someone who is like I love breaking stereotypes and all of those um, all those social norms that society has said I am all for breaking them and like right now the whole like mood I'm in is that I want to be someone who is heavily tattooed and pierced and I have pink hair because all of those things um, stereotypically 
um, go with people who are not all that intelligent, people who don't have a good education, people who are rebellious, people who are spontaneous, um, people who can't hold jobs. That's why you don't get employed when you have pink hair and you have a tattoo on your arm and you have a ring in your nose. Um, but I want to go into a profession, I want to go into the medical field. That is a professional field and I want to show like, hey, you think I'm stupid? I have a 4.448 GPA. What's yours? Like, I'm all, okay, so. This was like first way I figured out I could like break stereotypes. So I wanted to get a piercing and show that I'm smart. <laughs> that honestly probably sounded stupid and if you disagree with that, that's a-okay. Um, so I talked about that. Basically what my essay revealed about me is that A, I plan things. Um, I've been, I planned this for months. I originally got fake septum rings and wore them around so I could prove to my mom that I was worthy of getting a real one. If I want something, I'm gonna do everything I can to get it. It shows that I'm obviously against stereotypes and all that stuff. Shows that I'm courageous and brave, because um, at one point I talked about <sighs> like I wanted to run away. Um, none of those things are in any other part of my application. Most schools have supplemental essays that are particular to the school you're applying to. Some of these are like super fun and some of them are not so fun and are like really serious. Um, for example, one of Dartmouth's prompts um, this year said, it's not easy being green was a frequent lament of Kermit the Frog. Discuss. It's like, you can literally write about anything. And this is how people are, this is how you're gonna show Dartmouth like, hey, this is who I am as a person. Cause this is what I thought of when I heard this phrase. Cause everyone's gonna think of something different. So I was figuring it out and I basically talked about being bisexual. Um, so that's, so some of them are like super fun. Um, I know like Stanford asks you really random things like what's your favorite TV show? And three words that describe you. Be honest, honestly, just be yourself. There are those questions and then there are the very common, why do you wanna go to our school? What do you think you're gonna get out of our school that you wouldn't get out of another school? Like, why are we a good fit for you? Um, and those questions that I absolutely despise because they're not fun and I'm like, I don't know, you're a school. That's why I wanna go so I can learn. Coming from someone who absolutely hates these questions and coming from someone who has no idea what an admissions counselor is looking for with these questions, my advice is that what I think that an admissions counselor wants to know is if you've done your research on that school. Um, and if you like can find something that is special to that school that no other school can offer, put that in there. If there's a certain like class you know that you're going to want to take, or if there's a certain professor that works there that has won like this Nobel Peace Prize for doing this project and you really want to meet her and you're really inspired by them, then I put that in there. If there's a specific club, like you know Dartmouth has like the outdoors thing that like half the student body is like in and they have like the D plan which is super special um Harvard and Yale have like shopping periods which is like super special special um so basically just find something that is unique to that school and talk about how you want to do it honestly I have no idea um I think that's pretty much it so you hit submit on your application but no you're not done with your application yet because you gotta maintain those grades. Just because you get an acceptance letter from the school does not mean they will still accept you when you fail economics, right? So, gotta keep your grades up because you have to send a mid a mid year report and then a um, like final report, and a college will take back their acceptance letter if you're not doing so hot. So, maintain those grades. Am I right, fam? Recapping on that 30 minute video of tips that I have for you. A. Apply to a school. I don't care what school it is. I don't care how much of a reach it is. I don't care if you are 10 ACT points behind their average. Apply to that school because you honestly have nothing to lose. Um, be unique. Find something, whether it's an extracurricular activity or especially in your essay. Talk about things that are unique to you because those test scores um, a lot of those clubs and a lot of that background information is going to be the same for the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of students that are also trying to get that spot into that school. Ask teachers super early for those letters of uh, rec. Also ask your guidance counselor. Don't assume that they are going to write one because they have to write everyone one. Ask. And honestly, that's the only really school, like my specific advice. Every other advice is what every single admissions counselor will tell you. Like, take a good, heavy course load and all that jazz. Um, if you have any topics 
that you want me to go into depth about like essay writing or anything like that or like specific ACT test taking tips um, let me know in the comments or if you have any other like college related advice that you need let me know in the comments and I'll probably make a video um, so yeah, I don't want you to judge yourself based on my scores because I think it's also to remember that I got rejected from Harvard, Yale, Stanford. I mean, there's no formula. You either get in or you don't, and there's no way to guarantee a spot in a class. So, um, good luck to all of you juniors or seniors or whoever's watching this um, on your application. Make sure you start really early because it is a lot and it will get overwhelming if you wait. That's all I have for you. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because since I'm going to Cornell in the fall, um, I'll have lots of college related videos to offer the world. Um, but I'm going to go. So peace.